And action. we're live on <laughs> YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, for those of you that are still on Facebook, uh, we welcome you. And uh, for those of you uh, joining us on Instagram, uh, we welcome you. And uh, this is new. So this is no longer the Thursday 30. This is mm -hmm. Wednesday in the Word. The inaugural uh, Wednesday in the Word. The inaugural Wednesday <laughs> in the Word. And Tim, you are here to kick it off. I and am. Uh, it's great to have you back. And I'll Thank introduce you. him in a minute. Uh, but let's get things started, okay? So some of you are clicking on here. You're like, what's going on? Uh, we love to get into God's Word so that God's Word gets into us. And so we like to take some time every week to get into the Word. So we were doing it on Thursday. So we do a live interactive Bible study from 8 to 8.30. I, I like to call it 8 to 8.30-ish 8 uh, nice. because sometimes we go over. And then we just go over the daily Bible reading. So we cover an Old Testament chapter and a New Testament chapter from our daily Bible reading that our church does. And we, we follow the same reading plan that our Bakersfield Church and our Vegas Church follows so we can all kind of be in sync together. And so this is different than a podcast. So a podcast, you just go and you listen, mm. but we want you to participate. We want you to be interactive with us and interactive with one another. So we want you to drop us a comment. We want you to ask questions and participate. Uh, not that we can answer all the questions today because we're in the book of Revelation. <laughs> so there's a lot left up to interpretation. So, so uh, true. We'll, we'll, tr we'll try to answer the questions that you might have uh, to the best of our ability. But let's get things started. And while I'm introducing today's co-host, I want you to drop us a comment and let us know where you're watching from today so we can see you and let us know how the weather is in your neck of the woods, okay? And with that in mind, while you're dropping those comments, let me introduce the first ever Wednesday in the Word co-host. Come on. Tim LaMica. Boom. Hello. Here he is. <laughs> so, Tim, you've been on here before. I have. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and yeah. what's going on in your life these days. Yeah. Um, I work for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes here in the South Ventura County FCA. area. FCA. FCA. Um, I've been, re I think since March, I've been like transitioning to a full-time role, which is, it's a grind, but, um, I've been really blessed by that. And I recently was able to leave my other part-time job to be like just FCA. Um, and then I coach as well. So I coach football over at Agora High School where I am the varsity QB coach and I was the interim JV head coach for the last three weeks. So, uh, we're hoping that next season that that interim tag is off and I'm the and you're the head of JV. Yes. Okay, but yeah, I'll still be varsity QB coach though of my quarterbacks. So that's like that's like the the varsity role. Wow, and yeah. what a turnaround that team had. Yes, especially yeah. at the quarterback position. So Indeed. well done. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Man. Our QB got first team all league. Yeah, and then you were in the playoffs. We got, When's the last time a Gore High School's been in the playoffs? Uh, it was our first playoff win. I think in like seven years or something like that. Wow. So and then we lost in the quarters, sadly, but you know it was cool to still be well, there. Yeah, I really, man. It's, it's you made a really it. successful season. Like I said, good turnaround for from the year before. So yeah. well done, man. Thank well you. done. And uh, FCA's doing great for those people that don't yeah. know what FCA is. Mm -hmm. Tell us like what you do. Yeah, so FCA is a uh, campus ministry, and so I'm on campus both at Agora High School and then recently started jumping over at Moore Park High School as well uh, for their weekly huddles, which is like kind of like their student club meeting, basically. So it's an on-campus club that we as FCA get to be at, like as staff um, and help support. Um, so at Agora this year, we've seen a, like tremendous growth. Like last year was the first year they've had a huddle at Agora since COVID. Wow. Um, and now this year we're averaging over 120 kids for like the last month. At what? Each. Yeah, it's been insane. We've had to get like 15 pizzas from Costco just I to know. feed everybody. Where do you put all these kids? Uh, the second biggest building on campus. We're not in the gym because they have to leave the gym open for like yeah. general use. But yeah. they gave it. They gave us the second biggest building available. Man, so how exciting mm. that you know, and all this talk these days about how young people are turning away from God. Yeah. There's such a hunger, dude. Yeah. It's, it's funny because, like, the kids, it's probably a lot of kids in there, like, no, like probably 90% of them aren't church kids, maybe a little less. But, like, most of them, right, are not, like, active followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they probably, if you ask them, they probably claim, like, oh, I'm just here to get a Costco pizza. But, mm -hmm. like, you're giving up your entire lunch for maybe a slice of two pizza at the end, and, you're, and you'll listen to someone talk about Jesus for 10, 15 yeah. minutes. So there's something there, even if the kids the, want a minute. Even the if they don't seeds want to are themselves. being planted exactly. through pepperoni pizza. 
Indeed, indeed. And that's so cool. Uh, you want to, I don't, I'm, my phone is being used for Instagram, so <laughs> yeah. you're going to have to lead us, Tim, and, and some of the comments that we're getting here. I can see uh, people making comments, but my poor eyesight cannot see <laughs> that far away, or I, I shouldn't say I can't read that far away. Uh, but it looks like uh, we got several people making comments, so that's great. And uh, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of people tuning in from Bakersfield. Come on. Come on, Bako. Bako. Never, I've been to Bakersfield like once or twice in my life, but I feel like I feel like at heart. Yeah, I'm, we should uh, do because... like a, a road trip with all you YAs that that'd are. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun to go down there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Rachel from VBF back in the day says Rachel, hello. Rachel, how you doing? Um, let's see who else is on here. Dewey's here. Dewey Coleman. Dewey. Uh, Phil Robillard says good morning. Phil Robillard's on here. Yeah, Robillard, Pastor sorry. Phil. Uh, from then, Oregon. And then Lloyd says good morning as well. Good morning, Lloyd. Hey, uh, AJ, I don't have Facebook, um, but uh, maybe you have YouTube. You can, or maybe you can see comments on both. AJ is behind the camera dealing with the tech demons this morning. They're, they're out in full force. <laughs> Indeed. The, the, the tech demons have made themselves visible today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so on... On YouTube, I do have YouTube and Facebook. Uh, on YouTube, I see uh, Pamela Lee's here. Pamela. Uh, Sonia Orinder. Hi, Sonia. Keith Wyatt is in Springfield, Missouri. Oh, what's up, Keith? Representing Missouri. Yeah, and then um, NY6 game. Good football year for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good. And then uh, OU just lost our OC to uh, Missouri State. Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Yes. I knew that. I was testing you. <laughs> hey, I, I've got to say something about Tim with sports. Uh, I thought Josiah <laughs> was really good at knowing a lot of sports facts. This guy knows mm. more. So yeah. uh, you guys were doing a podcast for a minute. That was, uh, yeah, back pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. Young and spry college students. And we're like, let's, make, let's do a podcast, man. So, you know, for Podcasts are a lot of work. Yeah, yeah schedu scheduling was the hardest part. It was like, yeah. hey, like, let's just get talk about... Like, once you're in it, it's like, we can talk about sports for an hour, an hour and a half, yeah. and we're, we're rolling. But then it's but, like herding cats to get you guys all yeah. together, yeah. 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 Well, um... Yeah, and then we've also got Maria Gonzalez and Jean Mazza say good morning. Good morning, Maria and Jean. Good to have you guys. I don't know what camera to look at, but hopefully when I'm mm. looking at one camera... The other camera. You stare right down the middle yeah. of the two of them. Oh, there you go. That's good <laughs> practice. Well, pray us in, bro, because yeah. you you chose this date. Yeah. You chose this date. Yeah. I, I, I gave myself enough time to make sure if we went all the way to the championship, I could still do it. But um, That's good. No, but it's good, now. but it's also, this is like some crazy reading today. Yes, yeah. So for those yeah. of you that follow <laughs> our reading plan, we are in the book of Revelation. We have been. Come on. But we're also... At the tail end of the book of Joshua, mm -hmm. and so we're gonna we're gonna have an interesting um, read today. So praise him, bro. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you for this day, for this opportunity, God. We thank you that we have the opportunity to read your word, that, our, mm -hmm. that your word is printed right in front of us, God. We know that not everyone in the entire world has that ability, God. So we thank you for that. Uh, we just pray over this time that you'll be in it, and that even as Pastor Jim said, in some tougher books, some tougher reads, God, we know that you're speaking through them to us. So. We pray that we'll be able to find some of those nuggets that you have for us. Yes. And then if someone online has something good, too, then we can hear from that as mm -hmm. well. So we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Great prayer. And, uh, yeah, so uh, there, there should be more commentary on today's, uh, I was, I was going to say Thursday 30. But oh. I got I to get. You know, I was going to say, when you talk about the time, like 30 minutes-ish, now there's no time in the title. That's so right. So there's, there's no, no time constraint. in the title. There's no, there's so, no hey, we're going to be anymore. talking till 4 p.m. <laughs> and we're going to figure out what the real interpretation of the book of Revelation mm. is. Yep. We're going to discover it <laughs> today on the Wednesday in the Word. We will the come up eight hour session. <laughs> yeah. The Wednesday in the Word marathon. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Joshua chapter 12 mm -hmm. lists all the defeated kings. A lot of and, names. A lot of names. Uh, here's a fun fact for you uh, Baskin Robbins got their idea of 31 flavors of <laughs> ice cream from, from Joshua chapter 12 <laughs> from the 31 defeated kings. There, there we go. 
That is not true at all. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to fact check. Yes, flags. We're, that is not true at all. But, uh, you know, there's not a lot here other than yeah. this is a great yeah. historical documentation of the fact that God fulfills his promise. Mm -hmm. That this promise wasn't just given to Moses. This predated Moses when Abraham was in the land of Canaan. And, you know, it lists all of them, right? It, it, the lands of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, Gazuntites. Um, <laughs> well, not the Gazuntites, but uh, they were all of these people. So Abraham mm. was in that land and God was already speaking to him yeah. saying, I'm giving you this land. Mm. Then, of course, through the series of events, Abraham doesn't end up settling there. Yeah. But then Joseph, through that whole idea, he gets in power within Egypt, right? They, they get pulled down there because of the famine. And then through the hand of Moses, they get released from Egypt, you know, after the 400 years. So mm -hmm. the, the promise of God is fulfilled. And I think that, for me, is my bi biggest takeaway here because mm. the only thing, honestly, that is going to keep the promises of God from being fulfilled in our lives is us. Mm. Our sin our decisions, our disobedience, our lack of faith, our refusal to move when God says to move, uh, because Joshua is such a good picture of of leadership. Like if you're, you know, you're a young leader. Mm -hmm. Like I would tell every young leader that I sit with, look at Joshua. Look yeah. at his way that he led, and you see through chapter after chapter. And we were talking about this. I have a Bible study on Tuesday morning and said mm -hmm. that God is going out of his way as Joshua is leading the people to say, be strong and courageous. There's this constant <coughs> encouragement that God continues to give Joshua. And because yeah. of that, Joshua keeps moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we are not seeing those things in our life defeated that should be defeated is because mm -hmm. we are refusing to be strong and courageous and to move forward despite the pushback. Mm -hmm. Because it's the opposition's there. They're they're in the promised land, but they're having to battle. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, I mean, they accuse your generation of you being like soft. <laughs> and I think all of us are soft. I yeah, think that's, that's kind that's of um, you know unfair to just label the Gen Z generation as a mm -hmm. soft generation. Like yeah. I think all of us are soft in the way that we we don't. We don't want to have any kind of oppositions. We don't have, want to have any kind of troubles. Mm -hmm. And then it's a lot of times when the opposition comes or the trouble comes, we just say, oh, well, like, God must not want me to have this. Mm. But in reality, mm. sometimes you have to fight and you have to move through fortify things in order for you to experience your victory. And so... What Joshua was given, he, he was given the promise to say, these kingdoms belong to Israel. I've given yeah. them to you. But Joshua still had to battle. Mm. And my big takeaway from all of these kings that were defeated is that Joshua still had to step into those cities in order for those cities to be defeated. And there mm. are things, Tim, and I'm sure you could attest to this, bro. I mean, how old are you now? 24. 24. And he's single and ready to mingle, ladies. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I'm, I'm like looking at your age and just going, yeah, there's things I'm sure that you know that God's like promised you. Like, mm. you know, have you ever had somebody like give you like a prophetic word or like speak something over you? Uh, like, I see this in your future or something? I don't know, like directly like someone saying, I see this in your future. But like a big part of my story with FCA is people... Like, I, when I was praying through, like, if I was to go full-time with FCA, is then people come to me and saying, like, unprompted, don't know each other, saying almost the exact same thing as, like, the other person. They were both like, hey, like, I feel like you're really good at this job, and these kids respond really well to you, and, like, you're doing a really good job. And, like, that happened over the course of a week from two different people who never heard each, who had never spoken to each other before. And I was like, oh, well, that's a word from God. Mm -hmm. Like, when I was praying through, like, do I continue with this? And it's like, uh -huh. yeah, like, you need to be in this. And the same thing happened when... I was ending college when I was trying to figure out, like, my prayer was just like, God, what am I going to do after college? Because, like, mm -hmm. my classes were kind of teaching me what I didn't want to do. <laughs> so I was like, what am I going to do, like, with my life, God? And it was through a lot of moments of 
lack of a better word, a lot of moments of suck, where it's just like, man, like this is tough, like this this sucks. And through that, God showed me that He wanted me to be a coach. Where like if like those moments of tough wow. parts didn't happen, then I wouldn't have known that I wanted to coach. And so like my prayer was like, show me my career, and He's like, boom, here you go. Even though it wasn't obviously the plan that I had mm -hmm. for myself, it was. Here, you're going to go through this, but because of this, you're going to find out that I want you to be a coach, and that's going to be, like, the best thing for you, so. So he confirmed it to you that you were supposed to be a part of the FCA staff. Mm -hmm. So here's the question. So the, the promise was, God's like, I want you over here. I want mm -hmm. you to do an FCA, and I'm, I'm going to make you in charge of, you know, these mm -hmm. schools, and you're going to mm -hmm. do. Have you had any adversity or opposition mm -hmm. in any, or struggle? in this position that you are now walking in yeah um <laughs> agora fca was really tough last year just because it was it was brand new and like again like the leaders were all brand new there hadn't been anything since before covid mm -hmm. um so it was tough and even this year even though like we've kind of like now have like our feet under us and we're doing it i think like <laughs> for lack of like better way of saying like the growth has been tough mm -hmm. like even like we love the numbers we love that like there's that many kids there at the same time, like, now how do we, like, actually mm -hmm. connect to over 120 kids? And then, like, we had to, like, totally reorganize the way that we mm -hmm. serve pizza. Because before, it was just like, oh, like, come get some pizza, guys. Now we need, like, 120 students there. It's, like, a stampede to the pizza. And there's, like, mm -hmm. like we don't want kids to get trampled or, like, kids get run over. And then there was one day where, like, I got there a little bit late and, like, they'd served the pizza. And I saw a kid with, like, eight slices of pizza carrying, like, this just sprinting out of the, the room. And I'm like, that's, that's not good. <laughs> we, mm -hmm. we shouldn't have that. One slice each, each. But... So it's like a lot of like logistical stuff. And then, I mean, there's always some tough parts of like trying to get a building for it, like on campus. Because we, yeah. we were in the gym last year, and then they're right. like, oh, you can't have the gym. But what this do you year. do? You just you figure it out, right? We you pivot. You problem solve, mm -hmm. you pivot, you. And so the craziest thing was like, because we were in the gym last year and it worked really well for us, but there were some parts that were like, there were, if there were kids and they're playing basketball, like it'd be dribbling during mm -hmm. the speaker. And it's like, that's kind of obnoxious yeah. and distracting. And so. But we didn't know like, of any better option than the gym. So we like, asked for the gym again, and the school was like, hey, we can't give you the gym because we're opening it up like, to the general student population to use during lunch. Let's put you in the G building, which is that second biggest building um, on campus. And it's been totally for the better because there's no distractions for, from like, people doing go. basketball. And it's like there's like a little stage, yeah. and there's like, there a whole lot go. of space. And so yeah. it's what I think it's what helped us allow, allow us to get to as big as we are now. So, wow. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, all that to say, and the reason I asked that question is that I, I counsel people a lot, and as soon as the adversity comes or, you know, some challenges pop up, you know, some people can interpret that as like, oh, it must not be God's will. Mm. But you look at the book of Joshua, and it was God's will to give the land to the Israelites. That was God's will. But Joshua still had to grind it out, literally, mm and fight it out in order for the kings and the kingdoms to be defeated. And I just want to speak that to somebody that is tuned in right now, that you might be weary, you might be tired, but I want to speak the same thing to you that God spoke to Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Take the promises that God has deposited into your life and he's confirmed it, just like he confirmed to Tim about FCA, and move forward. Mm -hmm. and, and look at the fortified things that are standing in the way. And just like, God's, if God's giving me the promise, He will get me through the fortification in order for me to fulfill the promise. So keep moving forward. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't get discouraged. And uh, that, I believe, mm -hmm. is the takeaway. Yeah. I, I will say, I think the one Joshua other thing, well. because you said, like, the fulfillment, fulfillment of promise. I, I am a true believer that everything in the Old Testament can, at the end of the day, point to Jesus. Um, and so yesterday in our young adult group, we were diving into Luke 2, and we kind of looked at the connection between, Ooh, like... The Christmas story. Yeah. 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 So we kind of looked at the connection between, the, like, the first seven verses or so about, mm -hmm. like, the events surrounding the birth of Jesus, and then connecting that to Micah 5, 2, where, like, it was a prophecy of, you know, being, of uh, the Savior being born in Bethlehem, and, like, how, like, Joseph and Mary didn't just live in Bethlehem, right? It was, there was, like, a tough journey, like, because of, like, this unprecedented census from the government and having to make the... Like I said, like the tough journey to get to Bethlehem. It wasn't just like, oh, these people live in Bethlehem. Boom, Messiah was born there. It was like there was this whole thing that had to happen to get them to Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecy. So that was just part of what we talked about. So I thought that was kind of a cool, since it was on my mind fresh. Yeah, it's the God story yeah. that, that took place. And mm -hmm. 
you women that have been pregnant, my daughter is like, what, eight and a half months pregnant right now, and I feel so bad for her. Because <laughs> I'm like, I, you know, it's been a minute since my wife was pregnant, so now watching my own daughter go through pregnancy uh, is just been uh, just one of those things. And I was thinking about like Mary having to travel. I mean, it's, it's mm. hard for women that are pregnant to travel in general, but to be on a donkey, <laughs> like be, uh, that's crazy. Um, mm. But anyway, uh, you want to read some comments as we yeah, yeah. switch over to Re Revelation chapter 13? Let's see, let's see. Uh, good morning. I think that's Josh from YA. Good morning from Santa Monica, he said. Good morning, sir. Um, Shedrick11 says, good morning from Ventura. Oh, that's Susan. Oh, nice. Yes, good morning um, from Ventura. Man, glad she's on there. Glad you're feeling better. Man, we prayed our hearts out last week for you. She said, thank you for pouring into our young athletes. My boys loved FCA, praying God uses you in a mighty way. Thank Amen. you. I appreciate that. Um, and then paint.watercolors. Do you know who that is? Yes, Michelle. Nice. Uh, says, amen. We need to come to the Lord every day and surrender. So good. So true. So, okay. The beast out of the sea. Revelation 13. And then the beast out of the earth. Uh, Revelation 13 is famous because it ends with the number 666, which, mm. which has become a, a yeah. symbol. And it's chapter 13, unlucky number. I know, Whoa. it's truth. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, a lot of times, you know, Satanism, they'll feature, you know, the whole number 666 because it's, you know, the mm. number of the beast and you get this uh, dragon and, and these two beasts and this one beast is basically, you know, coming out with, you know, seven heads and mm -hmm. ten horns with ten crowns on the horn. And a lot of imagery here, Tim, mm. like a lot of imagery. And then you got this other beast coming out of the earth. And so, you know, the apocalyptic writing mm -hmm. that this is is like, you know, a genre of. So it's a whole genre of writing. And, and you know, it goes back to ancient times where the, the apocalyptic type of uh, writing like Revelation is, was very popular. And it's still popular today. And there's a whole like arm of theology called eschatology. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's the, study, the, of, the yeah. study of end times. Mm -hmm. So people that are really into eschatology really love the book of Revelation. But I'm just going to be totally transparent here <laughs> on the Wednesday in the Word. The older I get in Christ and the more <laughs> I know about the Bible, the, the less I feel I know about the book of Revelation. Yeah. Because there's just so many opinions mm. and so many interpretations. And what's so funny is how so many like people, scholars, theologians, pastors, commentaries, uh, commentators get so dogmatic about how they read Revelation. And it's mm. like, oh, this is how it's going to, like, Tim, I, I mean, I, I was telling you before we went online, like, I can vividly remember in the late 80s when I was like coming into a full, a fully devoted relationship with Christ. And there were all kinds of opinions out mm -hmm. there. End times was really popular. 88 reasons why Jesus is coming back in 88. And then moving into the 90s, the whole Left Behind series was, mm. you know, really popular in books. And then the movies came out. But what's so crazy about this is, like every couple years, there's a new interpretation of who the Antichrist is. Because if you read through this thing, then one can really come to the conclusion like, well, you know, it says that the generation that sees Israel come back as a nation won't mm. pass away before the end comes. So that's where a lot of people believe that we're not only living in the last days, we are living in the last days of the last days. Mm -hmm. And so our generation being that we were the ones to see Israel become a nation again in, in May of 1948, hmm. we're not going to pass away. So how much is a generation? 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years. We don't know necessarily what that looks like, but that's where a lot of people are like, we're, we're in the end, end of time or end of days. So if that's the case, then the Antichrist, the beast of the sea, is already born. Hmm. And I was telling Tim... I said, the latest. This, this is going to cause some problems, y'all. <laughs> the latest <laughs> interpretation of the, the beast is Taylor Swift. Oh, boy. I'm yeah. not even making this up. Boom. All of our, all of our followers gone. <laughs> Taylor <laughs> Swift is the Antichrist. Oh, man. No. Uh, I, don't, I don't see that at all. 
Uh, but I mean, like, her, I'm not personally a fan of her either, but I, I, I don't know. I we, we, say, we were talking I about it. Say, I, feel like she, I don't know if she's bold enough. I gotta know? say, <laughs> and I hope some of you don't uh, stop following me because of this, <laughs> I kind of like her music. Oh. I, I, I'm not like a, what do, what do they call those dads that like, you know, bring their, they call them Swifties or whatever. Right. I, don't, so I don't think I'm a Swifty, but when uh, Kenzie and Kylie both love her music, when, mm. when it's on, I'm like, I kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. So uh, I, I think her lyrics are pretty deep, but I know now we're, we're a Taylor Swift com commentary. Yeah. <laughs> Just so we're clear, Atmosphere's position is not that Taylor Swift is the Antichrist. <laughs> Just to be clear, <laughs> Atmosphere's position is Taylor Swift is not the Antichrist. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I've heard over the last couple of years, uh, Donald Trump is the Antichrist, Barack Obama is the Antichrist. A lot of people <laughs> every, think like every president, pres yeah, yeah, pretty much every president, president, Bill Clinton, <laughs> uh, and it's because you know the U.S. has such you know influence, and so mm -hmm. a lot of people interpret well, you know, this is kind of saying that the beast of the the sea, this Antichrist, is going to have like authority and uh, influence over all of the other nations, like the. Mm. So that's where, you know, the United States, but if you're a, a real big fan of eschatology, you're going to come to the conclusion that the Bible in all of its apoc apocalyptic writings is silent about the United States. Hmm. It's really not in the Bible. But one could argue Revelation 18, which I think will be in there next week, is more about the spirit of Babylon, which, you know, when the first desert storm war, uh, war broke out, and this is like 1991, mm -hmm. that everyone's like, oh, Baghdad is like Babylon, because it is where the actual ancient city of Babylon was, was hmm. located. It was in Baghdad, Iraq. So they were like, this is it. But I believe that if you look at this, there's a spirit of Babylon that is going to, to be a player in the end times. So my argument about where is the United States in the end times, my argument is, I believe we're Babylon. Hmm. And maybe you guys can prove me wrong, but the spirit of the Babylonian kind of I ideology is alive and present in the United States. Uh, and hmm. um, so it's just, it's interesting that, that we, the United States has such influence over every other world culture. But what we see here in Revelation 13, when it comes down to it, there's only going to be two cultures at the end. Hmm. There's going to be heaven. There's going to be hell. Yeah. That's it. There's going to be good. There's going to be bad. There's, it's going to be a one world system in the sense that you're either on team God or you're not. Mm -hmm. And this is what we see kind of rolling out in Revelation 13. There are believers, and now they're being basically martyred. And so some interpreters say, well, that's proof that the rapture happens at the end of the tribulation. Hmm. But the people that believe the rapture, and that is the taking up of God's people, happens before the, the tribulation begins. They're saying, no, 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 these are people that come to Christ hmm. through the two prophets that we read about in Revelation 11. Like those guys are going to have a revival, and then people that are the remnant that don't go in the rapture are going to be like, I need to give my life to Jesus. Hmm. And the, you know, the first people went up because Jesus gave their life for them. The second people are going to be saved because they give their life for Jesus. That's hmm. kind of the, the way that the pre-trib people uh, believe and, and say, well, what's atmosphere stance on that? Uh, well, I believe in the pan tribulation. Have you mm. heard of this? Mm -mm. It's all going to pan out in the end. Nice. We're on Team God. There we go. And so just like Joshua had the full you know, victory over the land, we're going to have the full victory over the world because our king is coming back in Revelation 19 to rule and to reign on the earth. And mm. so, uh, you know, it ends. I mean, as a young adult, you didn't grow up in, in such a heavy context of like eschatology so mm. like as you read revelation 13 tim i'm curious as as we get ready to end here like mm -hmm. what is as you read this like what are your thoughts yeah um i mentioned it to you before we came on but i think verse four is super interesting where it says people worship the dragon which we talked about is is the devil is satan um because he had given authority to the beasts and they also worship the beasts um i think it's 
that's gonna be a tough part. Whether it is whether we're already taken up or not, like that's gonna be just that's gonna be tough. That just like that people are gonna worship, you know, something so evil. Um, but I think just as Revelation as a whole, something for me that I've always found interesting is like, like Satan's fate is just like laid out, and like he's still gonna do all these things. When it's like if he because he knows the power of God, even though he's the enemy, like, he knows how powerful God is. Like he knows, <laughs> as these things are playing out, he's like, he's like, oh shoot, like this is playing out exactly as God said it is. Like he knows he's gonna lose, and he still goes through all this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, like you said, like there's just hope in that where it's like we can read all this and then be like, like oh, what does this mean about the beast? What does this mean about this? Like the beast of the sea, beast of the earth, every single different thing, mark of the beast, all that stuff. But we know that like I said at the end, like it's gonna like God's gonna win because mm-hmm. he already has. So um, I think that's kind of like the hope in Revelation because like you said like, there's people who just spend all their time in Revelation I feel like I'd lose my mind <laughs> if I spent every waking moment in the Bible yeah. in Revelation um, but yeah I think just there's yeah, the hope and the promise that God's already won it's already planned out and so. the symbolism here is just next level uh, especially with Revelation 13 uh, one thought that I had before we sign off here is that um, this, this person this beast uh, is going to come and bring pretty much like world peace. And, he, and he's going to be wounded, it says, in Revelation 13. And this mm. is where a lot of people interpret that he's going to have basically a his own resurrection story. Hmm. So this false prophet is going to help resurrect this guy because he's he's got this mortal wound uh, in one of the heads. And, and so the, the theory is at some point he's going to be assassinated Hmm. Uh, maybe there's going to be an attempt on his life to be assassinated, and he's going to live through it, or maybe even die and come back to life again. And hmm. that's going to like even show his power that much more. Like, wow, they they tried to take him out, and nobody can take him out. Like this guy is like next level uh, anointed, and so hmm. people are going to start following him even more. But I believe what what we're going to see is this person is going to be really good at being a peacekeeper. Like, mm. he's going to bring everyone together. And, you know, that's probably where some people are like, well, Taylor Swift is bringing everyone together. But, again, <laughs> I don't want to, like, there's there's going to be a unifier, yeah. which, you know, that right there tells me, well, there's a couple people that are disqualified because they are definitely not unifiers. They're right. dividers. Yeah. And so, you just like look, I, at, it's, it's just yeah. good to keep a temperature. Like, okay, this stuff is going to happen. And... Who's to say it won't happen on our watch? Right. It could. It could happen in our watch. So mm-hmm. I, I will go back and I will end our our commentary today by telling you what Jesus told his followers when they were asking, like, when when is everything going to happen in Matthew chapter 24 and 25? And Jesus goes on record to say these are the kind of events that are going to happen. But his conclusion was, I'm telling you all this so that you can be ready mm-hmm. at all times. So when I read the book of Revelation, my whole goal is not to be like, I'm going to figure it all out. I'm going to be the one that writes the book on the full revelation of Revelation. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. The point is, as I'm reading Revelation, the point that I'm walking away with is I got to be ready. Yeah. I got to be ready. Like when every, when everyone is turning towards the Antichrist and towards the devil and towards like anti-God really is that the spirit of Antichrist is anything that is moving against Christ. That mm-hmm. is the spirit of Antichrist. Yeah. So I got to just be ready like when the culture is moving this way that there's going to be a pull on me to go yeah. in the way of the culture. Yeah. And so me standing against culture is going to be how I'm going to ready myself because if I'm caught up with the stream of the, the current of our culture, when all this stuff happens, I, I am not going to be aware of it. I'm not going to mm-hmm. n- even notice it. So the, the call of God I see in Revelation is I got to put myself in a position yeah. that there is a spirit in this world that is actively moving right now that is moving against God. And I see it very much right now in our culture in America. Mm. And I have to stand before God so that I can just be aware that I'm not gonna move that way. I'm gonna yeah. stand, I'm gonna stand my ground. And so uh, my name is written in the book of life. And that, that's, <laughs> yeah. a, I mean, we could spend probably another 30 minutes talking about that. It's just mm. like there's some kind of a book in heaven that our names <laughs> our are names written, are in. Tim. Isn't that Come wild? On. So good. And so yeah. 
the question I have for everybody watching is your name in that book. Mm. And how you guarantee your name is in that book is that you follow Jesus and that Jesus mm. is Lord of your life. That's how you know that your name is sealed in that book. Mm. Yeah. I was just going to say really quick, too, I feel like as like an adult, and I think like a lot of younger people are with me on this, too, that like, because the Bible says, like, we will not know the day or the hour, that like, Jesus could come back tomorrow or you come back in 100 years or 1,000 years, whatever it is, like, that shouldn't change the way that we live today and tomorrow. You know, like, yeah. like we don't live differently because God's coming back tomorrow or coming back 100 years from now. Like, we live the same way for God every day. Like, we're called and to be, life is so called to stand out, called to be different from life the world. Life is so you know? fragile, dude. We could die. True. Yeah. Today. Even if Jesus didn't come back tomorrow, our life could be over tomorrow, yeah. probably know. So. And I, we've already lived, you've lived through two tragedies already locally. First mm. was with that Agora High School football kid. Yeah, that was just last year, yeah. Yeah, and then the other tragedy with the Westlake High School kid that oh, was yes. waiting for the bus. Yes, yeah. Very, uh, yeah, I guess two. I thought you were going to bring up Borderline because I was here at Kalu for that, too. Yeah, you but, were on that, too. But, but yeah, two, I guess, in the last... Two of your high school kids. Two in the kids. last year and a half, basically. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hmm. 14 and 15-year-old kids. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, that's all the time we have today, and it's the, uh, the Wednesday 37. <laughs> well, <laughs> pray us out, Tim, and, yeah. and uh, especially this heavy... The heavy revy of revelation. <laughs> All right, Lord, we just uh, we thank you. Thank you for this time. Uh, we thank you for your word, God. We uh, <laughs> it's dense, and we know there's a lot of tough parts, and maybe some things we don't understand. But God, we know that your promise will be fulfilled at the end of the day. We know mm -hmm. that you're working, God. We know that you're moving um, in our high school campuses, middle school campuses, at this church, in our communities, God. Uh, so we just thank you for that, and we uh, ask for your continued blessing in all of it as we continue to go out into the world and stand out and be different and live for you like there is no tomorrow, God. We just pray that you continue to give us strength in that um, and that we will do all things in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to give uh, Tim a, a plug, oh. a shout out, because uh, these guys are like local missionaries. So if God would just put it on your heart to help, him and his endeavors, he gets to be on the public uh, high school campuses. So that that is a gift that we get to do that here in California. So mm. we support missionaries in, in Africa. Let's support missionaries locally. And so we're going to have a link on our YouTube page that you're going to be able to click on the link and be able to give uh, Tim a one-time donation or maybe you become a recurring donor for him and all that God is using him for at the yeah. schools locally. So I'm, I'm sure you would appreciate that. Yes, support. absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of just the season I'm in is having to, you know, raise all that. But it's been good too and just seeing God's provision through it. But yeah, if anyone's interested in that, I'd love to just, you know, have a one on one conversation too and give yeah. more of my story and what I'm doing. So that way <laughs> you guys know it's just not it's not money going into the ether. Like you guys would know it's it's you know going to a very good thing and to God's kingdom. So yeah. Amen to that, bro. Well keep it up. Keep Will fighting do. the good fight. We love you guys. Uh, the link will be on uh, my uh, Instagram page here in a couple hours. Uh, if you uh, want to share this video with anybody that you think would be interested, uh, we would love and appreciate the shares. And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Wednesdays. All right. Wednesday, 8 a.m. Wednesday in the Word. Have a great day.